Hi there, I'm Danny Flex and welcome to the latest edition of Seconds Out Reflections. We're here every Monday, 4.30pm, to talk about the boxing action of the weekend just gone. And while it was a pretty unsuccessful night in general for the Brits in Spain on Friday night's The Zone show, um, we perhaps saw the crowning of a new potential British star in Felix Cash on Saturday night over on BT Sport. His win over Denzel Bentley, uh, adding the British middleweight title to the Commonwealth crown he already owned, was as close to punch perfect as I've seen in quite some time. Um, something I relayed to his trainer, Tony Sims, this morning at their gym. Felix himself wasn't there, obviously taking a well-earned rest after a long fight camp, but a much shorter victory got rid of Denzel in the third round. Um, Bentley, very talented, very young still, can come back strong. But Cash just looked better um, in all departments in the brief time the fight lasted. Started off on the front foot, didn't give uh, Bentley much time or space to operate. Um, landed the telling shots, I think he hurt him with a left hook early on um, in the first round. And after that, I think Bentley quite sensibly was wary of engaging. And Cash just stepped it up from there on. And when he saw his opportunity, um, he broke through with a right hand in the third, backed Bentley up against the ropes and just unloaded from there. And although Denzel wasn't overly happy at the time of the stoppage, I think once he's watched it again, he probably already has, he'll understand why the referee stepped in. His hands were starting to drop. Nothing was coming back. Um, and although he was trying to avoid the blows that were coming his way, quite a few heavy shots landed. Um, so no real debate about the finish there. And as I say, Bentley can come back, but it was Cash's night. The away fighter on a Frank Warren Queensbury promotion show. He's obviously contracted to Matchroom, um, trains out the Matchroom Elite Gym with Tony Sims and went into the rival promoters show and came away with all the gold. Congratulations to Felix Cash. The best I've seen him look as a pro and against the best opposition he's fought, which is kind of how it should be producing your best performance on the biggest stage and against the sternest of tests. Um, and he made it look easy, which is credit to the work he's doing with Tony Sims and the team behind the scenes. Really, really good performance, poised, composed um, and didn't waste many shots. That was probably the, the most impressive thing about it. He's got pretty fast hands, got very good footwork after his long amateur career. Still relatively young and uh, packs a punch as well. Whether that carries up um, as he goes up in class, he wants the European title sooner rather than later. And then obviously ultimate goal would be a world title. We shall see. But right, as for right now, Felix Cash has certainly proved himself the best domestic middleweight um, as it stands. Also on that show, we saw the return of Callum Johnson, two long years out. I hate it when people say that, actually, two long years. A year's a year, isn't it? It can't be longer than the other. It probably just felt like longer, especially if you're Callum Johnson. Um, but maybe he wished he hadn't come back in the first round. He got wobbled by the unsung Emil Markic, um, but came back strongly in the second round to show his class and power and get his opponent out of there. Um, he'll be a dangerous opponent for anyone. Um, in that 175 pound mix, obviously wants a world title shot against the WBO king, Joe Smith Jr. But as Frank Warren has got Johnson, Anthony Yard, Lyndon Arthur all in his stable, who knows um, what could be next for the Boston man. It's Boston, Lincolnshire, not Massachusetts. I should clarify it, although if you've ever heard Cannon Johnson speak, you would know that already. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, that was interesting on there. And also kind of a... a attention grabbing part of the show for the wrong reasons the majority of people felt that David Adelaide uh, unbeaten heavyweight was very fortunate to get the six round decision over Camille Sokolovsky who's got a record of a journeyman but has upset several unbeaten fighters before and is actually quite a, a good uh, test for any heavyweight short of world level uh, yeah I mean I didn't see the fight I only saw the, the main two fights so I can't comment on how, but from the majority of people that I read on social media um, and people who I respect um, who've watched the fight, they suggested that Adelaide at the very most had only done enough to draw. Um, but again, hopefully that close call will be a learning curve for him um, and he'll work hard to get better. Let's hope Sokolovsky, either with a rematch against Adelaide or another fight, gets a, another opportunity 
um, on a UK card because he always gives good value. Um, I talked about Friday night as we kicked off. Not the best night for the Brits. Gavin McDonnell, who was heavily favoured um, to beat Andoni Gargo, our uh, native of Spain, for the European featherweight title. It would have been uh, McDonnell's second European title, a different uh, second weight. Uh, but he suffered a horrendous cut early in the fight on his eyes, right eye, and um, just got worse as the fight went on. They couldn't seem to stem the tide of the blood. And although he seemed to be ahead for me, narrowly, um, they went to the scorecards at the end of round five, I think it was, and it was a majority draw. He was ahead on one card and the other two were even. Um, so that should go again. Um, but it looked, in the short time it lasted, like quite a competitive fight was on the cards. I mean, McDonnell, slick, popped out his jab, moved well, landed the more, uh, you know, educated blows. But Gargo was, was very good in putting on the pressure. Um, he closed the ring down well. He threw in bunches. Did all the things you should do against an awkward, um, you know, high-energy fighter like Gavin McDonald. So I'd, I'm looking forward to seeing that go again. The nominal main event uh, was Kay Prosper challenging Sandor Martin for the uh, European super lightweight title. Uh, Prosper had only fought at English level before, so it was a big step up for him. And so it proved on the night. Not the most exciting of fights, but Martin did all the basics well. Stayed a step ahead of Prosper throughout. Um, and yeah, the, the gap in class was evident, I think it's fair to say. But that doesn't mean Prosper can't rebuild. I know he's 36 years old, but he still hasn't had that many fights as a pro. And he could go back down, fight for the British title, perhaps, and rebuild from there if he's successful. Uh, but Martin, his uh, reign continues. He obviously beat another Brit in Joe Hughes before. So we'll see what happens next for him. He'll probably be looking towards a world title shot going forward, um, you would think. But yeah, so they were the, the two main fights on that show. We also saw more controversy uh, with Jez Smith finally nailing down a fight at Super Welterweight, which he's been looking for for a long time. Um, knocked down the uh, power punching former European welterweight champion, Kermin Leharaga, twice. Um, and Leharaga spat out his gum shield on the second knockdown, bought some precious extra seconds to recover. And then as soon as Smith started to fade a little bit and found himself under pressure um, against the ropes late on in the fight, the referee was all too quick to step in and, in inverted commas, rescue Smith. We'd like to see that go again with... I don't want to be harsh, but maybe a, a less uh, less impulsive referee, shall we say. Um, but Jess Smith, in the, in the, until the stoppage came, gave a very good account of himself. I hope he gets more opportunities. If it's not against Leharaga, then someone over in the UK at £154, because he's still improving in the gym all the time under Josh Burnham. Um, and all the TV fights we've seen him in in the last six months to a year, however long it's been, He's impressed and it's been entertaining. So he's someone who very much deserves another shot. Um, so that was what I watched uh, over the weekend. But I'd like to know what you think. Uh, how far can Felix Cash go? Who would you like to see him fight next? There was talk after the fight about potentially Chris Eubank Jr. Um, a fight with him. Is that something you'd like to see? If not, who would you like to see him go up against? Um, Callum Johnson. Is he the best of the domestic light heavyweights? How does he stack up against... Arthur, Yard, Joshua Boazzi, of course. Um, ha, where, where do you rate him there? And David Adelaide, is this kind of, has he been exposed by Kamil Sokolovsky? Or is it just a, a, a way marker in how, where he is on the journey and just what he needs to do to get where he needs to go? Do you still see, you know, top level potential in him? Let us know what you think. I'll respond to some of the comments um, and I'll be back on Thursday, 4.30pm for Flexpectations. Looking ahead to so much action going on, but including the uh, Chisora Parker pay-per-view event, Sky Sports Box Office. Will it be the last Sky Sports Box Office event under the current deal with Matchroom? It certainly looks the case at the moment. Um, Sonny Edwards on Friday night challenging for his first world title against uh, Maruti Mithalane. So that'll be, I'll probably pronounce that wrong, but too late. Um, but that'll be a very, very intriguing fight to preview as well. Um, and big action out in the US too. Um, so plenty to, to preview on Flexpectations on Thursday 
and then I will review it all the following Monday, so a week today, 4.30 p.m. on Reflections. Really appreciate your time, as always, and I'll see you all soon. Cheers.